Thank you so much for your patience. We greatly appreciate it. Shall we try this again? Uh, let's start from the top, everybody. Uh, back to position number one. All righty, here we go. So <laughs> again, we do apologize for the technical difficulties. As everyone knows, everyone's kind of just trying to do this for the first time. So uh, we appreciate everyone's patience. Think of us as a prototype ride. We got a couple bugs, but we're going to work them out. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the annual ACE Business Meeting and Election Platform and Candidate Forum. I am your online moderator, Chris Roberry. Today, you'll be able to hear from all of the ACE Executive Committee on what they've been working on this past year, as well as what they're planning for the next year. The business meeting also allows members to ask questions of organization officers and or give any other general thoughts. Now, after the business meeting wraps up, we'll then go into the candidate forum and election platform right here, so you don't have to go anywhere, where you'll be able to ask questions of any of the candidates running for office in our organization. In addition to any questions that were previously submitted via email, ACE members who are tuning in have several different ways to ask questions and interact with us. You can email your questions to questions at aceonline.org, or you can ask your questions in the live chat area. Now, in order to keep things moving, just make sure you include your ACE membership number and your name in the question, as well as whom you wish to ask the question to. We have opened up these two events to members of the public. However, only current ACE members in good standing may ask questions of the executive committee and or the candidates for office. Now, if you're watching this and you're not a member of ACE, welcome, thanks for joining us. If you'd like to join a club that's open, transparent, and gives you a say in how things are run, check us out, we're at aceonline.org. With that, I will turn it over to ACE President Robert Ulrich to begin the business meeting officially with audio. Hi everyone, live from Turtletown, Tennessee. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2020 American Coaster Enthusiast Business Meeting. As a 501c3, we hold an annual meeting of the members each year during our national convention. Due to the current situation, we've had to go virtual this year. But welcome to all joining us, members and those not yet members. We're sorry to miss the camaraderie and fun of a coaster con, but hopefully this is the one and only coaster con at home we'll have in today, this year and in the future. And while we realize this does not replace what CoasterCon brings to your life and membership in ACE, we hope it brings you some coaster fun this week, as well as an opportunity to connect virtually with those who share your passion for coasters during CoasterCon at home. Tomorrow, Sunday, June 21st, we'll kick off the festivities with our opening ceremony Zoom meeting at 1 p.m. Eastern time. You can participate in it through Zoom or observe through Facebook Live. Many of our activities will also be broadcast live and via recordings on our YouTube channel. We also invite you to join in trivia, submit artwork to our virtual art gallery, and vote for your favorite photos and videos. You'll find a week filled with fun ahead, so don't forget to share your coaster memories to enter to win our Share Your Moments contest using the hashtag share your moments share your photos on facebook twitter or instagram from events on ride photos or special park memory with hashtags share your moments and ride with ace who knows you may be our next winner you'll find a full list of activities and links to join on the website at www.aceonline.org at home today we're hosting our annual business meeting Immediately following this, we'll have our candidate and election forum. Questions submitted prior to the meeting will be answered during the member's presentation. Again, if you have a question during the meeting, please submit it via the YouTube comments section or to questions at aceonline.org. You'll need to type the word question or comment in uppercase to alert our volunteers if you use the YouTube chat. You can also send questions to, again, questions at aceonline.org. However, when you ask your question, please include your name as it appears on your membership card and your city and state. This, this is for our annual minutes. Then state your question. Our volunteers will verify membership and ask your question of our panel. This meeting is being recorded for the purpose of the minutes and also to be broadcast later on our YouTube channel. I first want to personally thank everyone participating in today's meeting. 
As a member of ACE, this is your club and your opportunity to discover and discuss the activities for the year. The director's reports have been posted to aceonline.org and we'll be going through them in their given order during our agenda today. The first item of business is the call to order of the meeting. This meeting was officially called to order at 1.08 p.m. Eastern Time. The second item on the agenda is the, the approval of the minutes. However, as we can't take a vote, this, uh, this, the minutes approval process will be tabled until next year when we meet again in Eastern Pennsylvania at CoasterCon 43. The next part of the agenda starts with the officer and director's reports, and I advise everyone to refer to the booklet as published on aceonline.org. The first report is mine as the president, and it starts on page four. I have not received any questions in advance of my report, but let me just highlight that the Strength of the club is all in the volunteers. And I feel as the president, it's important to highlight the fact that our volunteers do um, the best job they can with limited resources. And really we pull off an amazing feat every day. An example for this is this meeting. I have watched broadcast televisions where people are paid lots of money and they pull off shows that are not entertaining and informative and we're trying to do the same with a volunteer budget and people all across the country and i want to first thank everyone who volunteers for ace because without you i don't look as good as i can um uh, chris have you received any questions online for the president's report uh, so far, we have not received any questions uh, from the president's report. All right. Thank you, Chris. So the next report up is Vice President Jeff Nemec. Hello, everyone in ACE, and good morning from Monterey Park, California. I wish that I was going to be back in my home state of Pennsylvania with you all, but here we are. So the vice president's report is also contained within uh, the documents that you should, be, you have, should have access to. So I just want to go over a couple things. One of the primary duties of the vice president is the overseeing of the disciplinary committee. And the disciplinary committee, as Robert just mentioned, is also powered by volunteers. And I wanted to just take a second and thank the volunteers that make up the disciplinary committee because they get handled, they come in contact with and have to handle some of the most distressing and concerning issues that come before ACE in an effort to try and maintain the integrity that this club is known for. So I wanna just take a second and thank the, the members of the disciplinary committee. So uh, those issues are kept confidential. I do wanna mention that uh, there is a forthcoming social media code of conduct that will come before the executive committee that I'm working on right now because a lot of the issues that we see are dealing with social media. So I want to just remind everyone in ACE that regardless if it is said in person to someone or if it is written in online communication to someone, that it is communication between members. So we take those, those issues very seriously. So I want to just remember for people to have respect for fellow ACE members, for park personnel and everyone they would communicate with as an ACE member. Beyond that, the vice president also oversees ACE Cares, which is the philanthropic arm of ACE. And we primarily what that is, is just partnering with other organizations. And when they host events, we can sometimes help out. We don't really, we don't take on the responsibility ourselves, but if we see something for, that we want to support, we can partner with them. So that is in the report. That's a little bit of a longer section. I want to thank the, the ACE Cares chair, Adam Nepotic, for taking care of that. He's done a fantastic job working with Give Kids the World and making different projects happen. A lot has been tabled for 2020, unsurprisingly, but we have some, there are some events that are set up for 2021. There is also the Youth Advisory Committee that I, that I founded a couple years ago when I became vice president, and that is working to get input for younger members and trying to diversify 
our membership and get newer and younger people involved in the coaster riding community. So if you have any input for us, we would love that. My email is jnemick at aceonline.org. We would love your input on that. But yeah, that's about all I want to cover specifically. There, the I also, we started an ACE college chapter, which had its inaugural first year this past school year. And with COVID and taking a hit into that, we had some issues. But if you are an ACE member who is currently in college and is looking to potentially form a ACE college chapter that could then go to regional events, please let me know. But I could ramble for a while. But that's everything else is in my report. Chris, I did not receive any questions about my report ahead of time. Chris, did we get any for the vice president's report? Uh, we currently have no questions for the vice president's report. Uh, however, you can always ask a question afterwards um, if we go past the segment, uh, if you'd like. But no, so far, no questions. Okay, thank you. That's all I got. All right, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Um, Next on the agenda is our secretary, Lisa zagarella Contu. Um, Lisa's report starts on page 13. Thank you, Robert. Uh, hello, everybody from Rhode Island. Thank you all for being here today. I don't really have much to add to my report, except that um, I've been taking a lot of notes lately, and I really need to thank uh, Jerry and Leanne, who have both been extremely instrumental in helping to revise and refine my work. So a big shout out to them. And I did not get any questions, but if anybody has any, I'm happy to take them. Chris, anything? Right now, so no questions for Lisa. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Um, next on our agenda is our treasurer, Sherry Armstrong, whose report starts on page 14. Thank you, Robert. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm really happy that everybody's attending our business meeting today. Um, I wanted to thank you all for all your support and for your membership in the club, because without you, we wouldn't have a club. And I wanted to explain a little bit about what your dues actually pay for um, when, you, when you make your dues. It pays for our budget items, including things like rent, credit card fees, our insurance, our management company, our website, and our publications. Um, without your dues and your membership, we could not have all of these wonderful things. In my report, I talked about the Janney funds. Janney funds are where our investments are held. Um, they were really terrible this spring. They are looking much better now and getting back up to the amounts prior to the downfall of the stock market. On our event pricing, just a reminder, all our events are always priced to break even. We don't make money on them. So all the money that your dues pay for, pay for our budget items, but not for the events. If you see like that an event made $2,000, there are probably 500 members there. And let me tell you, if you can make the pricing come to within $4 per person with all the things that go into a pricing, it's really close. Um, we have something to announce about Amazon Smile. I hope that all of you are shopping at Amazon a lot. And currently, Amazon gives you a small kickback to, to nonprofits to, for part of buying from them. Prior to this, you could only do it with a browser. Now it's becoming available on your lap, on your iPhones and on your tablets. So you need to think about, please help us out. Um, and, and go to Amazon Smile. If you just go, go to your Amazon app, go to settings and go click on Amazon Smile, you'll be in. If you're not already there, you can also select a nonprofit organization to have this little bit of funding help us out. All the funds that we get from Amazon go to help our ACE archives and our ACE preservation funds. So they don't go to help our budget items. They strictly are just for our donations. And we know you're all shopping, so please help out. Um, this year, the EC has made a lot of hard decisions. We're working as a great group of people, and we all look forward to a brighter future. If you have any questions, I can always be reached at carmstrong at aceonline.org. Be well, be safe, wishing you all a great summer, and look forward to seeing you at an event soon. Mr. Roberry, do I have any questions? I currently have no questions for Ms. Sherry Armstrong. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sherry. Um, next on the agenda is our immediate past president, Jerry Willard, whose report starts on page 27. 
Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you're at. Uh, this is Jerry from Long Beach, California. Uh, unfortunately, I can't be beachside today and it's a gray overcast day anyway, but I am sort of fireside, if you will, at least for the moment. Um, I'm gonna talk about a couple of things briefly in my report, uh, you know, feel free to take a look at it. I don't know what page it's in, in the booklet, but it's there. Um, and then I'm going to show you, since a lot of what I do is uh, with regard to the website, I figured it'd be better to show you it rather than just talk about it. So you don't need to look at me for very long anyway. Um, so the one thing I did want to highlight before we get to the visual is, uh, you know, this is my last few months as ACES representative on the National Roller Coaster Museum and Archives Board. Um, it's been about 10 years and that's coming to an end. Some good things are happening there, though. The uh, if you haven't been following it, the building expansion in Plainview is, is almost complete. Uh, as far as the building, obviously there's a lot of work to get displays and whatnot inside, but uh, that wouldn't have been possible without all the work of Jeff Novotny, who is the board chair, as well as the folks at Larson uh, who have provided most of the labor for free. So if you're not familiar, what the museum does is it generally pro uh, buys all the supplies and uh, you know the the metal and everything, uh, roofing, AC, et cetera. And then uh, Jeff's crew at Larson actually does the installation for free. So it's quite a savings to the museum and, and uh, uh, quite a great thing in that regard. Um, but yes, as I mentioned, there, there'll be a, or I didn't mention, normally there's a Golden Ticket Awards in September this, this year, there's not one, but at that the NRCMA usually has its annual board meeting. And this, uh, this year will be, I will not be there virtually or otherwise, uh, because I will be stepping down from that board. So it's been a great 10 years and I think we've made some good progress, um, but uh, you know, I, I'm ready to work on other things. I'm not leaving this board executive committee yet, uh, at least for another two years. Uh, so, but as far as the NRCMA board, this is it for me. So enough of that, let's talk then about some website stuff if you're not familiar with what's happening. Um, the first part of my report is the um, ACE News part. Let me grab the right screen. So hopefully everybody can see the ACE Online website. Um, and uh, so this is the general website. Um, there's always slideshow at the top highlighting a few of the uh, you know, the more um, important things, the more uh, recent or current things, uh, such as this CoasterCon at home uh, slide here. I'll show you more about that page if you haven't viewed it yet. Uh, hopefully you will soon enough. Um, scrolling down just briefly, there's some information here. There's always some features down here in the ACE360. Again, highlighting things that are timely or otherwise. Um, so you can see some information there. So whenever you come to our homepage, be sure to scroll down and check out ACE360. It's a great thing. Um, but one of the things obviously I spend a lot of time on is ACE News. And if you're not familiar with where it's at, it's uh, under publications in ACE News. We have links to the current issue, previous issue, and then all past articles, which you can get via PDF download. Um, so this is the current issue. I wanna be sure and thank Jay Jacobs and Mac Rush. Um, last year at this time we were talking and we had only had maybe a few weeks worth of posts. Um, this year, obviously we have more than a year's worth of articles and and postings on uh, the website for ACE News. So um, didn't get a ton of feedback last time because it was fairly new, but hopefully a lot of you are enjoying this. And while it's not the same, obviously, as a printed uh, version, hopefully it has some other attributes uh, that you might like. Um, we try to provide an attractive thing with lots of articles, with lots of pictures, uh, and uh, get it out certainly more timely, weekly posts. And I love that some of our members are engaging with us by leaving comments in the articles. I encourage everybody who actually does visit, who likes an article, has a comment, has their own thing to share, please please feel free to comment on, this, on the articles as well. We love to see them and we love to get you engaged. Um, and uh, you know, sometimes we even use some of the comments uh, as for future articles. So, so be sure to take a look at it. If you're not familiar with it, again, um, the easiest way to get there is aceonline.org slash ace news. Um, so then let's talk about why we're here this week. Um, some of the pages I've been working on lately have been related to CoasterCon at home. And I think Robert mentioned it earlier, but aceonline.org slash at home will get you to our, uh, our schedule, all the things you need to know this week. Um, 
and the main thing is the highlights you can see here, but the main thing down here besides the business meeting is the schedule. So um, it's pretty well fleshed out now, but we'll be adding links and other things throughout the week. So if you don't see, like if something says meeting, but you don't see a link, well, it's because we're, we're holding off on posting that just yet. Um, but anything that generally has a link is going to be in red and probably bold text and you hover over it, you can see there are links. So all the week's activities will be here. So please be sure to check it out and keep coming back. Um, also, you'll be getting um, daily emails to remind you of what that day's schedule is. So hopefully uh, you find those useful. Um, we're trying, just trying to encourage everybody, particularly those who aren't necessarily there frequently, um, to, to be able to know what's happening each day. And who knows, you may forget. It may be something that day you wanted to do and didn't realize. So hopefully the emails will help you that day. Another new part of the site is uh, the CoasterCon uh, sort of mini site on our, on our web page. So here you can see um, this after the slideshow information on CoasterCon in general. And this is sort of um, meant to be the new CoasterCon.com site. So if you're used to going there, pretty much most, if not all, the material has been has been or either will be moved over to this site. So you can see CoasterCon at home, CoasterCon 43 for next year's convention when we get to get back together all over again. Some history and things, um, history pages on each. There's basically a write up on every single convention. There are photo albums from the last several years that you can access, and just all sorts of different information here. So please be sure to check that out. Again, easy to remember. It's always going to be aceonline.org/slash whatever this last part is. So in this case, it's CoasterCon. We try to use logical uh, names for all these. So a couple other pages to highlight quickly, uh, given this month is, um, oh, well, first, before I get to that, another thing we've been working on recently are the landmark page. So um, it's been updated and we're slowly working our way through the different landmarks. I think the first four are done here. So each, each coaster will get their own landmark page. Um, with the plaque text uh, stats on the coaster and then an on-ride video at the bottom for every single uh, Landmark we have so we've got four done. We're in the process of getting them all done probably in the next couple months um, So please check that out Now to get back to the timely June is uh, if you weren't aware already uh, World Roller Coaster Appreciation Month We have a page and various resources for that. Um, so be sure to check that out. You can get to it um, through the events uh, links here and also links on the front page. Um, you can see Roller Coaster Month. Um, this one is probably not as intuitive. It's WRCAM, World Roller Coaster Appreciation Month, so, um, or RECM, I guess. I don't know that that makes sense, but that's just how I've been saying it. So, also, there's a Share Your Moments page. Again, if you weren't familiar this month, we're really trying to promote folks to share their coaster moments, particularly since we can't all be together. Um, be sure to check this out and uh, share your moments on various social media. There's ways to do this. There's instructions here. I know our social media team, and I'm sure Elizabeth will talk about it under her report, have been great about getting the word out too. So, uh, um, so be sure to check that out. And then just briefly, a couple other things just to not use up all my time, but um, there's a new help page. Jeffrey Seifert um, did a great job of putting that together, and I sort of helped uh, format a little bit. So all of your help in one place now. So if you went under membership and help, You'll find everything there. The help uh, link is always at the bottom of every page now, but there's various options here for all your questions. So it's a little different than the FAQ. We still have one of those, but this is more about how to use the website, different questions that people usually ask. So when in doubt, feel free to just come here. And then worst comes to worst, if you can't find it here, that's when you click the Contact Us button at the top um, or under Contact either way and send us questions couple other quite, uh, recent pages. I'm sure Chris will talk about this under his report, but the volunteer page um, is new, volunteer skills survey. So if you're interested in volunteering, please be sure to fill it out. We're trying to revamp the volunteer center and make it more useful, and hopefully um, you'll see a lot of good stuff there in the next few months. Um, I'm sure Sherry and Robert would both like me to highlight the Donate to ACE page. This is, again, new. Um, so if you are interested in donating to one of ACE's special funds or to the National Roller Coaster Museum, all that information is here as well. Uh, information about what it's used for, click on the button to donate. Um, I know it's a little tough in this time for folks to be considering donations, and I completely get that. Um, but if you ever have a chance and want to contribute to some of our great causes, please feel free. And then finally, not exciting, but there is a new org chart. It's a little better organized, a little easier to read. And so if you ever want to see who's doing what for the organization, feel free to check this out as well. Um, but I'm sure I've used more than the time I should have used. 
So I just wanted to point out a few things. I guess I'll wrap up by saying, if you ever have anything about the website or otherwise that uh, you'd like to talk to me about, um, just feel free to email me at jwillard at aceonline.org, website or otherwise, but I'd always love to hear. We're, we're working on a lot of stuff, so if you give a suggestion on the website and it's not just a fix of some kind, don't be discouraged. We'll, we'll definitely try to get to a lot of these things, but we are trying to do lots of enhancements to the site. And again, I want to thank uh, Jay Jacobs and uh, Mac Rush who have helped an awful lot with uh, with putting this stuff together. So it's it's uh, it's really come along, and I'm, I'm really proud of it. It's been a year and a half since it went live. With that, I'll uh, just say thank you, everyone, for being here and appreciate all you do for ACE and your participation. Thank you, Jerry. Um, Chris, have we received any questions for Jerry? Yes, Jerry, we do have several questions, actually. So the first question uh, comes from Russ Ozana, Draycut, Massachusetts. And Russ's question is, is there any plan to increase the size of the font on the ACE News Online? Uh, Russ, there hasn't been plans. We did, uh, there were some concerns about the text color uh, being light gray on most of the site. I did bump up the darkness of the site several, uh, several shades over the last couple of months. Um, we hadn't heard anything about the text on the ACE News uh, areas, but we can certainly take uh, a look at that. Um, most of the font size on, this, on the site is pretty, um, pretty standard throughout, and it is meant to be scalable depending on whether you're using a mobile device, but it is something that we can, we can take a look at. Um, perhaps we can talk offline whether, I just want to be sure I'm understanding is if it's the ACE News page or the articles or both that you're talking about. So maybe you can circle back with a, me with an email on that. So. And the second question comes from Dave Vanishek from Reno, Nevada. Dave would like to know, is there any thought about having a specific region have a specific, yeah, let me start that over. Any thought about having a specific region drop down filter on the event page? On the event page, that would be very difficult because we'd basically have to make classifications for every single region. And it's possible, but it basically means that whoever is putting in all of the events, and that's generally our region director, Chris Krafchick, um, would have to categorize them all separately. And then there would be no way, you can't do them together, I guess, is the other problem. So if you wanted to look at all regional events, you can't do it if they're all in individual regions. You'd have to do either or. So, um, but it's definitely something if we figure out where we're looking at the events page in general, we're still not crazy about the way it is. We're using sort of um, our, our web provider, our admin site providers, built in functions. And I know a lot of you preferred some of the fo features on the old site. We're still trying to get the web, the event page a little bit differently set up. So maybe at one point we can have filters and that would be easier to do than, than what we're talking about right now. Um, but it's not out of the question, but not, not in the near future, I guess I would say so. Okay, thank you so much, Jerry. And just a reminder to everybody who may be tuning in now, if you are wanting to ask a question of anybody of the executive committee, you can do it several different ways. You can do it via email, which is questions at aceonline.org, or you can ask your questions in the live chat area on YouTube. Just remember to include your name and your location uh, as well as whom you wish to ask the question to. Uh, even if somebody has already passed in the meeting, you can still ask questions of them throughout the entire meeting. Uh, right back to you, Robert. All right. Thank you, Chris. Our next um, director on the agenda is our member services director, Scott, Scott Short. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us on this afternoon and greetings from warm, hot and humid Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, it's, a, it's a scorcher out there today. So uh, there's nowhere, nowhere else I'd rather be right now, just kind of out in a park. But, you know, the world is what it is today. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to get through it all. So uh, I'd like to... Um, make a presentation kind of summarizing my report for everybody. So let me get that going here. And we'll roll through that. Uh, 
All right. So uh, first, I wanted to uh, highlight some of our membership numbers. Uh, as of last night, our total membership was just shy of 6,200. And I mean, all in all, I think that is a, a great number where we're at. Um, what's even more surprising and a little bit more kind of eye-opening is just a few months ago, on April 1st, we were all the way up to 6,700. Um, based on our numbers, that was an all-time high since we started keeping a close tabs on the uh, the membership reporting over the past several years. So over the last you know year or so, we have our membership has jumped up so much. In fact, that a year ago in that same time frame, we were right around 56, 5700. So our membership has jumped about a thousand members over the span of a year. Uh, the good news is, yeah, we are still up compared to where we were last year, but uh, the state of the economy and COVID-19 right now are starting to show in the membership numbers. So hopefully as things rebound and parks open and interest uh, in the club um, gets back there, uh, you know, we'll see those numbers pick up right where they left off. Um, a little bit of... You know, some comments on the website. First, I want to thank Jerry and all the volunteers there for keeping our content up to date. That is a big, um, big improvement on where we've been over the years. So I uh, just want to give you a, a, a proper thanks and, and keep up the good work there because, you know, without without a, a good content flow, um, you know, the site just kind of is what it is. But by keeping it fresh, uh, it, it's it's someplace, we, you know, everybody wants to go visit and, and get a lot of information. So So thank you very much for all your work on that. Uh, the kind of help guide what and where we want to, you know, make some changes, uh, we've implemented Google Analytics. So some of you familiar with uh, websites might have, have seen this before and heard of it. So, uh, you know, it shouldn't be too much of a, of a stretch. But basically, it's it's an, uh, a system that Google provides that you can plug into your website and you can get all sorts of information and metrics on where people are visiting, how they're looking at your site, and that sort of thing. So we, as the, the website staff, uh, the administrators and the content designers and all that can kind of get a good picture on where the users are going and how they're accessing it. So as you can see here on this, this graph, uh, you know, a lot of the you know, a lot of us are hitting the uh, the, the main page, and that, that's understandable. Uh, the one surprising here is when we had our spike back in, you know, February, that was a news article that was posted around the Indiana Beach sale. So it just kind of goes to show that by keeping content up to date, people use our website. So as long as we get the, the links out and the word that, hey, we've got some great information on our site, we know people will come and see it. So this is just gives, it gives us more reason to keep that, that effort going and keeping the news online. Um, the other thing we can tell from the site, like I said, is we can see how people are viewing the site. Uh, we can see if they're mobile or desktop or which browsers they're using. So you can see here, uh, you know, we're kind of 60, 40, 60% uh, of our users are using a mobile device. So that kind of keeps keeps lets us know that as we develop things for the site, we've got to try it both and, and make sure it looks good, not on just not just not on a you know a laptop or a monitor screen, but also on a phone. Um, you know, we don't want to 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 short one side of that um, as we put things together. Uh, and the same thing over here, we can see that a lot of people are using Chrome, uh, our Mac users are using Safari. Um, you know, just gives us some insights on where we need to verify things before we we let them go, and kind of make sure that hey, if some people somebody's having a problem in one aspect of the site, you know, we got to keep that in mind and say, oh, well, I'm not looking at it on Chrome. I should look at it on Safari and see if they're seeing the same thing there. Um, finally, we also know can see how people are coming into the site. Um, what, what I'm illustrating here is we get a lot of direct hits, people just typing in and going, but we also get a lot of references coming from social media and and other other means. And when it comes to social media, uh, we get a lot of sessions from Facebook. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, the other social media platforms might not be directing as much traffic back to the site, but Facebook is definitely pulling its weight there. Uh, so what does this all mean? Uh, Google Analytics gives us great concrete data to help guide website enhancements and where we should spend our efforts. Uh, now I wanna spend a couple minutes talking about some of the other aspects of our member services group. Um, first, I wanna bring up merchandise. Um, uh, if it hasn't been announced yet, uh, we are offering a CoasterCon, CoasterCon at home discount at shop that 
aceonline.org. Uh, for all orders over $50 or more, you're going to get free shipping, as long as those orders are made over the next week, starting on tomorrow. So no codes, no special you know, access or anything like that. Just go to the site, fill up your cart for $50. Starting tomorrow, you get free shipping on that. Uh, as far as benefits goes, um, things are a little slow on the benefits front. Uh, not, you know, not surprisingly, with the way that the um, uh, parks are re slowly reopening this season, and things are finally starting to get somewhat back to normal. So, as as we get a better feel for how the parks are going to extend offers to us, you know, we'll we'll get that news out to you. So, just keep watching on the website and the emails that we send out that that feature benefits, and you know, we'll keep you up to date on on that front. Um, also, just want to say many thanks to the various volunteers in the the member services group. Um, you know, this is kind of the the organization that keeps ACE moving forward on a day to day basis. You know, be it the uh, keeping the IT side going or pushing out emails and all that sort of thing. So, I just want to give uh, you know proper credit to the to the folks who are are driving those areas of the club, uh, namely uh, John Swearens, our mer membership manager, who keeps these. Um, uh, you know, membership numbers and trends and analysis uh, coming in from that front. Um, you know, Stacy uh, Secord Peters from Merchandise, who works with our vendor, sets up the sale I just mentioned, uh, creates new items, and um, and you know all things around Ace Merchandise. Uh, IT manager Brian Peters, who helps you know helps us get our email system set up, gets the website services, uh, hosting for our regional sites, um, and all that fun IT stuff. Um, also to member of benefits manager, Mike Masterch, Masterch who, um, uh, you know, keeps working with parks and regions to get our, um, discounts and, and special offers, um, available to all of us and, and listed on our website, uh, to roller coaster back issues manager, Dan Ryan, who, you know, coordinates our orders that are coming in and, and works with other volunteers to get the, the, uh, magazines out the door and in, into the uh, to the buyer. And finally, to member communications manager, Jess Nemec, who sends out our regular ACE update email. So every two or three weeks or so, you get that ACE update email. She's the one who's coordinating all that. So again, uh, ACE wouldn't be what it is today without these folks. So uh, if you see them or uh, talk to them, give them, give them a big thanks. Uh, finally, uh, just, uh, you know, I think the overall message uh, from everybody here is stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great week at Coaster Con at Home. Thanks a lot. Uh, any questions for me? So, Scott, I have no questions for you. However, I do have a question uh, for Jerry, if he's available real quickly. I believe it's probably an Elizabeth question if it's the one I saw in the chat. So is it asking about no limits? It certainly is. So we can wait till Elizabeth if we'd like to do that. I just, I, I yes, I believe we're going to have, uh, go ahead and ask the question just so the world's sure. page, please. So uh, the, the question comes from Nicholas D'Ambrosio of Branchburg, New Jersey. Nicholas wants to know, is there any way that we can add an area on the website where we can post uh, our no limits coaster designs? And I believe, uh, Elizabeth, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's part of what's going on tomorrow. And so tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, depending on your time zone, there will be a place where you can do just that. Is that correct, Elizabeth? That is correct. So I'll address it um, twofold to make sure that we understand it since we're having to do this virtually. First of all, for the No Limits Recreation Contest that's coming tomorrow during CoasterCon at home, um, those videos, once submitted, um, they will be uploaded to the ACE YouTube channel for viewing and voting. Um, so that's where we're going to host those. But to make sure that we address it to the other side, if you're looking for something like No Limit Central, where the videos are hosted and people can scroll through them and see them at all times, we're going to, I think Jerry will agree with me, but I'll let him chime in. But I think that's something we're going to leave to letting No Limits host since they're a separate entity. Um, and that's their business. Um, we want to let No Limits Central keep that um, proprietariness of exhibiting and showing off everything you're creating with their software. Would you agree with that, Jerry? Yes, thank you for clarifying. As, as this is a little new to me, I, I appreciate that, uh, that better information, so. And those are the only questions. And Nick, if you didn't answer your question, please feel free to comment again and clarify if we didn't touch on everything you're looking for. All right. Thank you, Scott, Elizabeth, and Jerry. 
Um, next on the agenda is communications director Elizabeth Ringus. Her report starts in the booklet on page 46. Welcome everyone. I never thought I'd be coming to you from my home for the business meeting, um, but I hope you are enjoying the stream and I'm um, getting a lot out of it. I'm coming to you from Glen Allen, Virginia. And um, like Robert said, my report starts on page 46. I am always happy to field questions, ideas, comments. Um, please feel free to reach out to me anytime at E-R-I-N-G-A-S at aceonline.org. I'm always open to um, fresh ideas that come. So um, communications means that um, I assist the teams for social media, marketing, um, the education team, um, public relations, the educate, does I say education, and um, member recognition teams. So you'll find all that information on my report. I don't really have anything to add. I just wanted to highlight a few things. First of all, I wanted to highlight our amazing volunteers. Um, to reiterate what others have said, what the teams that I work with do simply amazes me. The energy, the thought, the effort that they put into making this organization great is just unbelievable. And it's a huge team that manages everything behind the scenes for those um, categories. Um, COVID definitely had an impact on communications. Um, it's helped me to branch out and do things I'd never done before, um, writing statements I never thought about. So it's been entertaining, but sadly it's shifted a lot of our plans for this year. Um, we had initially planned that this year was focused on enhancing and um, making the most of what we had established for marketing and for social media last year. Um, so this was a maintenance year for us. We wanna make sure we're implementing the programs that we have started developing last year and making them the best they can be. Um, we did put a membership drive on hold that we had planned to really um, make sure that people knew we were a membership organization and to bring in new members. But it looks like maybe that won't be necessary based on those numbers that Scott was sharing. I um, mean, it looks like we are welcoming people and hoping, hopefully giving you all what you want from your membership. Um, and we really truly are just focusing on continuing to enhance our offerings for our members and making sure people know what we are and giving the most to our part partners. Um, last year was an amazing, I really have enjoyed what I've gotten to work with on the um, executive committee, have enjoyed this, this wraps up my second year. Last year we made great progress in enhancing the benefits that we were bringing to the members and to the industry. I'm really proud of all the achievements that we have um, made over the last year. And we've welcomed a lot of new volunteers to the team. Um, this year, our new efforts were um, World Roller Coaster Appreciation Month and CoasterCon at Home um, were both efforts under the communications team. And here you'll see um, lots of new logos were introduced into the ACE um, repertoire this year, many during IAPA. Um, I'm excited that we launched our podcast. Um, World Roller Coaster Appreciation Month was launched at um, IAPA, and sadly, it has taken a um, drastic turn to being all virtual. But I hope you've enjoyed some of the highlights on social media and what we've put together to highlight the education, safety, history, and fun that amusement parks bring to our life. Um, IAPA was a great adventure this year as we took on um, some new challenges and some new initiatives. So I hope you saw those effects of the coverage from home. We've enjoyed the Share Your Moments campaign. All your pictures are amazing. Please keep sharing them. Um, we're going to be doing two drawings this week. There'll be one on Wednesday and one on Saturday. So make sure you're filling up the social media feed with Share Your Moments. Our podcast launched since the last CoasterCon. Um, we've had a Pinterest page. We've had so many great things. So um, check those out in the meeting booklet. But what I really want to say is, all this only works if you participate. And that's why I really want you to think about is being part of this effort. This isn't something that we do and is just there. We want you to be part of everything we're doing. This is the interaction we get to have from home and still enjoy our um, hobby. So I want you to think about uh, participating in the Share Your Moments campaign. All you have to do is set your picture setting to public and then put hashtag share your moments. Hashtag ride with ACE is great to add to it too. Keep engaging on social media. 
um, likes, loves, comments. We want to see everything and we want to see what you think about what we're posting. Start a conversation. We love your ideas. Send us ideas. If reading through the business meeting booklet or something we say today um, or something you think of in a year, we want to hear your ideas for marketing benefits. What do you want from your membership? Share it with us um, and leave us a review on the podcast. And um, we could really use that to help our ratings. Um, and I hope you want to make it a five star rating. <laughs> we want to um, really get this podcast spread and you will find it on iHeartRadio now. It is available through that. And send us a sound bite for the podcast. Tell us what you're thinking about what we're sharing on it. And um, just help us keep pulling together some wonderful things to offer to our membership and to the industry. Um, Chris, are there any questions for me? So far, there are no questions for Miss Ringus. All right. Well, I'm just going to touch really quick on Coaster Con at Home and wrap up. Um, Coaster Con at Home is hopefully a chance to feature your host parks of Coaster Con 43 and enjoy a little bit of Coaster Con fun from home. It won't be the same. I can't promise that. There's no ERTs, but there are VRTs, virtual ride time. We have some great POV footage for you, presentations, games, the chance to interact. Tomorrow, everything starts at one o'clock. The No Limits contest ends on Tuesday. So be sure to check out the rules and all the details of what that's gonna be. Um, starting at one o'clock tomorrow, it goes live. And be sure to submit your entry by Tuesday evening. And tomorrow, the photo and video contest voting begins and that ends on Thursday. So be sure to check the website for how to do all those um, activities and there's so much more. Um, but I really wanna highlight that on Thursday during our meetup, um, it, that's our group photo and our memorial slideshow. So please um, log in and check out those highlights. And like Jerry said, that you'll be able to see everything. Um, most things are through Zoom if it's interactive. Um, there are also um, Facebook Live and YouTube Live opportunities. So check out the website for how to interact and be part of Coaster Con at Home. Thanks, all. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, our next item on the agenda is from the publications director, Leanne Droud. Her report starts on page 60 in the booklet. Thanks, Robert, and thank you all for attending the business meeting. Uh, I'm sorry I can't see you, and I'm sorry we can't all be together this year. Um, I'm reporting in from Pittsburgh, and um, as I said, I wish we were all together in a business meeting, but this will just have to do for this year. As Robert said, my report is on page 60, and Tim Baldwin's report is on page 62. So I hope you'll read those. I'm not going to try to uh, review everything in the report, but as always, I like to start by saying thanks to the publications team. I mean, without them, there would be no publications. And uh, in case you're wondering, a roller coaster, as you know, comes out four times a year. But Ace News now is is a weekly uh, operation because. When we, when we printed Ace News, uh, we got everything together and uh, it was printed, you know, uh, six times a year. So there would be six uh, occasions when, you know, we would have all these things to review and then it would, you know, go to the printer and then you would get it. But now that it's, it's a weekly, um, we work every week. You know, we have articles to review. Uh, Tim sends us uh, the news to review. The publications team reviews it and you see it either weekly or sometimes now bi-weekly because we have a little bit less news since um, the parks aren't uh, open yet. A lot of the parks aren't open yet and we're not sure about you know uh, what coasters will be opening, but you will be getting your news. Um, and I really hope that you're enjoying your ACE publications, both ACE News and, and Roller Coaster. As for Roller Coaster, uh, you, you can read Tim's report, which is very thorough. The next uh, roller coaster will be the summer issue, number 154, and that should be mailed to you by mid-July. So you'll be getting that soon. Uh, as for ACE News, as I said, you know, we, we've been very regular with that. Uh, you get a report every week or every two weeks, depending on how much news we have. Um, a while back, we asked people to submit their most difficult credit stories. And we've gotten a few of those, but we sure would like it some more. So if you have a story to tell us about the most difficult coaster credit that you got, please do send it uh, to Tim. His email address is, is in his report. 
Um, one thing that I heard over the years, and you know, Ace News now has been, oh, first I'd like to thank Jerry for his review of uh, what he has done to keep it, you know, for keeping Ace News online. And, and uh, I appreciate that review. I was gonna mention some of those things, but he already mentioned them. Um, one thing that I've heard from members, and I don't, I'm not sure that I understand why, why this is happening, but some members say that they have not been reading. When I ask, you know, are you reading Ace News online? They say no, because they've had, uh, because they have to log in to see it. Now, as you know, Ace News is a member benefit, so it's only available to, to Ace members. And um, it's really not that hard to, to log in. It's, it's, I hope everybody's logging into the Ace website for other reasons, uh, if not just to see Ace News, but there's, you know, we've all, all the reports so far and all the ones that you'll hear, we'll talk about, you know, the information you can get on the, on the Ace website. But in terms of signing in, I, I don't know your experience, but my experience is I log into ACE on the ACE website and I stay logged in. I don't have to log out. Uh, some people have told me that they get logged out and, uh, and they therefore they have to log in every time. I'm not really sure what to do about that. Um, uh, Jeffrey Seifert may have some uh, comments on that or maybe other people have written to him about that, but I, I don't know what that solution is, but I really encourage you when you get the news, when you get your email uh, with reporting about the current ACE news articles, I, you know, I hope that you will log in to read them. And as Jerry also said, I hope that you'll comment on them too, because we really would like the feedback, what you think about the articles. And we would love to see your comments. And in regard to that, since we, um, we have been keeping track of the kind of articles that have gotten comments, um, this has been a pretty crazy time right now. So uh, I was thinking that in the fall, I would really like to send out a questionnaire to all ACE members uh, to about ACE News, asking ACE News, is, since it's been online for more than a year now, I'd really like to get some feedback about the kind of articles that you like, that you're interested in, the kind of news that you would like to get. Um, we're a large club, we're an international club, and we would like to um, feature not just, you know, Coaster News and, and Park News, but news about our members because you know, Coaster Con is that's the, the, one of the sad things about not being able to get together this year is that, you know, it's not an, we were missing out on an opportunity to meet new people. That's one of the things I always look forward to at Coaster Con is meeting new people that I wouldn't ordinarily see because they don't live near me and they don't go to my regional events. And so, in terms of Ace News, we would like, you know, we would like to have news on members and you know, when, when that survey comes out or when that questionnaire comes to you, I hope that you will fill it out and, and return it because I would really like some, some feedback on that. And as Elizabeth and others have said, you know, this is your club and the publications would like to cover news about the club and things that you're interested in. Um, Roller Coaster, I, I can't say enough about the, the quality of that magazine and the kind of news that it covers because it's, it's of course an ACE publication, but it covers so much about the history of roller coasters, the history of parks that you're not going to find anywhere else. And it, it's, it's a really valuable publication in my view. But, you know, we, we are a club with, uh, and I guess the thing of course that we have in common is that we all love roller coasters. So, but there's a lot of news related to that. And um, I'm certainly interested in finding out, you know, what, what you're interested in hearing about. So thank you all again for attending. And uh, I don't know if there are any questions, but if there are, I'd be glad to answer them. So Leanne, right now we have no questions for you. I have one question quickly for Elizabeth. If I can go back quickly. Uh, it's from Bill Figgy from Cocoa, Florida. Bill wants to know uh, or says, love the monthly podcast. It is very good. Are there any plans for like a biweekly or weekly? There are other podcasts that are weekly. Well, I am glad to hear you're enjoying it. And we would love to host the podcast more often. Um, Chris Roberry, your host for today, is the producer of our podcast. So probably the better person to answer it. But I will tell you that we have set some goals long term. But because we are in our first year, we're going right now, we're targeting trying to get it out on the first year. That's our big goal right now. And um, we're working on our timeliness because it is a huge project behind the scenes to produce this each month and arrange our speakers and um, make sure it's edited and a wonderful experience for you. 
So we do um, would love to bring it into a bi-weekly. We've also discussed that we would like to bring it into a video format so that there's also um, a video with it. So we're looking at ideas. Um, if you have some or you know someone who'd like to jump on the team and help us out, we are always looking for volunteers to help us be more efficient and keep producing a better product. Thank you, Bill. And those are the questions for now. All right. Thank you, Leanne and Elizabeth. Our next director's report is the History Preservation Director, and that's Dave Dragon. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on this meeting. Uh, it's unusual, but um, I just want to thank my managers, Rick Barber, Melinda Gaspari, Dave Hanna, Lisa Zegweed, for all they do to help me out. Um, everybody who's ever donated, thank you for your generous donations over the past year. You keep us going on preservation funds and archives funds in the museum. Um, I'd just like to tell everyone when you get out, when you feel safe to go out, support your local park. They're going to need the help moving forward. But do it when you're ready to do it, when you feel safe. And just want everybody to stay safe and have a good year. Chris, any questions for Dave? Uh, no questions currently for Dave. All right. Thank you, Dave. Um, our next director on the agenda is the region director, Chris Kravchek, whose report starts on page 72. Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and hello from Orlando, Florida. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Okay. Hello from Orlando, Florida. Um, as we said, I am the region director. Uh, primarily what I oversee are the regional reps and assistant regional reps um, and also volunteer coordination. Um, I wanna start by saying thank you to the reps and their teams for all the great work they do. Um, as a longtime rep of Florida, I know how hard it can be and how time consuming it can be. And without those reps and their assistant reps, we would not have the great events that we have in all the regions. Um, so a few highlights from my report that does start on page 74. As Jerry mentioned earlier, um, we have updated the volunteer section. Uh, please check it out. One of the most important things that we added was a volunteer skills database where you're actually able to fill out and let us know what skills you can do, what skills you're proficient in, so that hopefully we can match you into a position that's open to benefit both you and the club. Um, we've also made the page a little easier to navigate. Um, so please check it out when you get a chance. And if you have any questions, by all means, let me know. Um, a few highlights from the report. Um, we do still host monthly regional meetings, regional rep calls every month. Um, every, reg every regional rep that's able to attends and we discuss what's going on in their region, what events they're working on, any challenges they're facing. And so together we try to overcome those challenges to continue to put on great events for our regions. Um, so from last year's con to this year's virtual con, uh, there were 80 regional events and there were also 12 informal meetups. Um, obviously, we didn't have as many events because in March, we only had two events that squeaked in before things started shutting down. And we had no events in April, May, or June, and July. We have a few events on the books, but obviously, that's just going to depend on how this COVID thing goes, you know, hopefully we'll be able to safely host of events, but, you know, we're at the mercy of this dreadful disease. Um, for those 80 events, uh, there was a reported attendance of almost 6,000 attendees. So that was great to see that nearly 6,000 members were able to join those events and hopefully have a great time. Um, and also a lot of our events do uh, have auctions to raise money for the ver various charities in our club. And it was reported that we, uh, we raised about almost $20,000 through those regional events over the last year. Um, and that's pretty much the highlights. Everything else in the report, it is a pretty long report, but each region submits their regional report um, and they're all listed. All 20 regions submitted their reports and they're all listed. So please, at your leisure, read them. You can see some of the great events they hosted, the you know, great events they had. Um, and that's pretty much it for my section. Uh, Chris, any questions? No questions currently, Chris. Okay, thank you, everybody. Stay safe. Uh, 
Thank you, Chris. Um, and here's where we get the live broadcast because Steve Berto could not be attending tonight's today's meeting, but I know he sent in a recording for the meeting for everyone to see. Hello, Acers. My apologies that I cannot attend the virtual business meeting. So bear with us a moment here as we go ahead and get that all queued up and I did want ready the opportunity to go. To say a few words. It's been a pleasure. And again, as we're doing that, reminder director, to everybody that if you'd like to ask a question of any member of the executive committee, in the uh, please, by meeting, all means, send it to question. Review, and I don't have too much information to add to it. It's been a difficult year for all of us and am disappointed that we had to postpone the 2020 national events. We had a great itinerary planned for the national events this year and rest assured that it will be carried over into 2021. Our par partners are eager to host us next year and it will be a welcome celebration when we return. As posted, the two 2020 ACE national events will take place on the same week for Costacon and the same weekend for the Preservation Conference. We do hope to have a spring conference in 2021, but I don't have any information to share with you at this time. Just a reminder, for Costacon 43, if you made a booking at one of the ACE recommended hotels, please visit the Costacon 43 event page for information and instructions. With the exception of the Hawthorne Suites by Wyndham Allenton Foglesville, the hotels will remain the same for 2021. Room rates, for the most part, will remain the same. The exception are the two hotels in Sellens Grove that lowered the room rate. The Red Lion Hotel Harrisburg Hershey will remain the host hotel while in the Hershey area. And please note that the Banquet Hotel in the Allentown area is being transitioned from a Holiday Inn to a Marriott property. New online booking links will be provided in the near future and will be posted on the Costacon 43 event page. Similarly, for the ACE Preservation Conference hotels, information and revised online booking links will be posted on the ACE Preservation Conference event page when available. Please do feel free to reach out to me with any questions you may have. Stay safe and be well, and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone next year. Okay, we are back now uh, with the uh, meeting here with everyone else. Uh, All right. No questions for Steve, um, but we also will have that available uh, as part of the recorded broadcast that we'll be putting in. Correct. Um, thank you. And again, Steve apologizes for not being able to be here, but again, we're all volunteers, and sometimes the real job gets in the way. And our final part of the agenda is the association manager report, which is Jeff, who is Jeffrey Seifert, and his report starts on page 93. Hello, everyone. Um, coming to you from Grand Prairie, Texas, H headquarters. Um, just for clarification, I'm not a member of the executive committee. I'm actually an independent contractor. Uh, who has been hired to handle the whole business side of the organization. So I take care of the membership renewals. I take care of sending you your membership cards, all the payment processing, all the bookkeeping, and all the bill paying. So uh, even though we're not hosting events at this time and uh, you know things have slowed down because of the COVID-19 virus, um, the business side of our organization still continues. So, 
I've been working out of my home for the last six years, so things around here haven't changed that much. I'm still, you know, continuing to work out of the house. So uh, the fact that I can't go anywhere hasn't changed much. I do have to exercise a little more caution when I go to the post office. Uh, and of course, I can't uh, can't get anywhere other than uh home in the post office and the bank is pretty much all I'm allowed to go to. Uh, our park has opened uh, at Six Flags Over Texas. I, I haven't decided yet whether or not I will uh, go ahead and visit there. But a um, couple of things I can highlight from our report. Uh, as I mentioned, we still continue doing the monthly financial reports. I prepared a file to send to our independent accountant, uh, Boysell Morton and Walkowitz. Um, they did a financial review, and I'm happy to report that uh, they let us know that everything that we do is in accordance with the general accounting pr principles that are accepted by in the United States. So we did not need to make any modifications. Uh, that same file was used to prepare our taxes for fiscal year 2019. So that has all been filed and all taken care of. Um, as Scott mentioned, we were seeing a, a steady uptick in the number of memberships, and, and I was really excited to be welcoming all of our new members and, and uh, continuing to issue new cards. That dropped off a little bit once uh, you know this pandemic started, but I'm really happy to see that a lot of our members are still renewing. So yeah, he showed the numbers have dropped down a couple of hundred, but a lot of people are still supporting us. A lot of people still like the work this organization does. So I'm really happy to see that everyone's coming back and, and uh, look forward to sending you all your membership cards and, and keeping those publications rolling out to you. Um, we just sent out uh, Roller Coaster Magazine 153 in the spring and uh, 154 has just been sent to our inbox. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I also volunteer as the uh, uh, managing editor for Roller Coaster. So we're going to get that out to our proofreaders for final proofing and get that in the mail to you in the middle of July. Um, speaking of mailings, uh, I'm doing our best, my best to keep our membership uh, database up to date. Uh, we send our mailing list to a cleanup service twice a year now so they can verify all the addresses and make sure that they all meet with the U.S. Postal Service standards, uh, add the zip plus four. They also let us know if anyone has moved. So as long as someone has moved and filed um, the yellow standard yellow form that ends up in the national change of address database, uh, then we can update our uh database on our end and, and make sure that the magazine gets sent to the right place. Unfortunately, since Roller Coaster is a periodical, uh, it typically doesn't get forwarded. If the issue comes back to us, all I usually get is the label and the cover torn off and, and that's it. They destroy the magazine. So if you do move, please let us know that you've gone to a new address or moved to a new address or at least fill out um, a proper change of address form so that it ends up in that database. Um, Let's see, so other things since last year, I took care of handling the uh, uh, database update so that we are in compliance with the European Union's GDPR. Uh, we sent out an email about that. You may have noticed that after August of last year, uh, our website and pretty much everybody else, you have to click accept to acknowledge cookies now. And that that's thanks to this, uh, to the European Union's uh, GDPR regulations. So. Uh, if you, if you, you should, you'll, you'll notice now that you have to accept. And, and if you, if for some reason you clear, you clear your cookies, um, in the website, then you'll have to accept that again. I know a lot of people have told me that that keeps coming up a lot. So it has to do with some of your antiviral software is probably clearing cookies, but I'm not going to get into a lot of details about that. Uh, something else I do, going back to the old database, we had two different settings for how members' privacy settings were handled. So I tried to consolidate all of that. A lot of the old members had a checkbox where they were checking off whether they wanted their name or address or email or phone number to be published. And, uh, the new database had different settings. There was a lock next to the field that you were supposed to do. So uh, I made sure that that's all consolidated and it's only using one system now. And, and any of the older members who had used the previous system with checkboxes, I made sure that those settings were updated to adhere to the settings that they wanted to have in place. 
Uh, don't really have much else. Uh, I do get a steady flow of calls into the office and, and through the communications uh, uh, portal on the website. Um, if you do have any questions, I'm really easy to get a hold of. The, the contact us form is at the top of the website. Uh, my email and the uh, phone number at the bottom of every page on the website and also the addresses there. So should be really easy to find. If you have any questions, you can get a hold of me. If you have questions for any other member of the EC, I can make sure that it gets forwarded to them if you didn't happen to catch an email address as we were going through. So that's all I have for right now. And uh, thank you for sticking through with this meeting for so long. And I hope to see you at an event soon. And Jeffrey, we have a uh, comment for you actually from uh, Scott Connor and Tex Arcana, Tex Arcana, sorry. Uh, loves the new membership card with the matte finish. So there you go. Oh, th thank you, Scott. I'm glad you noticed that. Yes, uh, um, I, I had noticed that the shiny side, the shiny cards uh, showed a lot of fingerprints and and uh, and a scratch very easily. So we decided to switch to a, a matte finish. Unfortunately, the the printer would not fit print on a matte finish on the back side. So we could only do the logo side as matte and uh, we had to keep a shiny side on the on the back where we print the membership information. But when I do replace the printer, I'm going to look for something that can print on matte both sides. Uh, I do think that's a much better looking card, but thank you for noticing and thank you for the comment. All right. Any other questions, Chris? That is all the questions. All right. Um, because the next item on the agenda are any other members, questions, comments, or concerns, and you're saying there are no more. That is correct. We may want to give folks a minute just to see right. if they want to add anything else. So again, if you want to ask a question, right. uh, go ahead, questions at aceonline.org or drop it in the YouTube chat. Just make sure that when you do that, you put your full name uh, and where you're located. And I want to remind everybody as we get to the point of wrapping up the business meeting part of this is when I when the pandemic started, I like a lot of people tuned into Netflix and there was a show called Cheer. And the thing that I took back from Cheer was people talked about getting to the mat and how difficult it was to get to the mat. And I want to remind everybody that this is an all volunteer organization. And while the timing may not work for you and it may not work for us, you put yourself on the mat in ACE. Everybody that you've seen give their reports as a volunteer, um, they all took themselves and put them in the uh, into the system. They all stood up and said, I'm volunteering. And the next part of the meeting is going to be the election candidate forum and a discussion of the uh, bylaw and amendments to the constitution. And that's another way that you put yourself on the mat. So the election, the, everybody should have received a ballot in their inbox just recently in the last week. Um, the election, the ballots are, the votes are due on July 15th. And if there are no more questions, I'll call for an adjournment from a member of the exec committee because they can all make a motion to adjourn. We do have one more comment. Oh, all right. And it comes from uh, Doug Lozier, uh, who said that uh, just giving a, a positive comment that uh, you all are doing a great job in this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. So do we have a motion to adjourn? From There's also a, a question from B. Derek Shaw from York, Pennsylvania. He said, any con site for 2022? And uh, Robert, I don't know if you want to answer or I can, but obviously we know where 2022 is that it just got moved back. So. Right. So right. 2022 is the, the convention for 2022 is where the convention was going to be for 2021, which it just dominoed it forward. So we will be in 2022, barring any kind of natural disaster at um, Cedar Point and Kennywood in 2022. And we have one more comment that's just come in from David Lipnicki, Grand Prairie, Texas. Great job to the entire executive committee and the various committees and volunteers. Thank you, David. I, mean, I Derek, will say Derek, that Derek clarified that he meant 2023. So, oh, 
no no discussion of 2023 <laughs> at this point um there this this is one of the things that when i first ran for president i said we wanted to try to do to do some form of broadcast of the business meeting the challenge has always been wi-fi in the parks obviously wi-fi at our homes has been a little bit better but we will do something um in the future if i am president to somewhat bring Khan's business meeting to you. So again, I'll take an, a motion to adjourn from a member of the executive committee. I move we adjourn. I have, we have okay, a motion. one more question. That's all right. Question. I should say, fortunately, we have another question that's come in. Uh, also from Nick D'Ambrosio, uh, why don't we do membership cards digitally on our phones? We have looked at that. Uh, Scott, can you answer the, or Jeffrey? I don't, I mean, we've looked at. The, I'll, I'll the, jump in on this one, sure. Um, I, I had thought about this. I thought it would be a great idea. And, and then it was some of the executive community members pointed out um, because I made a sample card for myself and, and they pointed out how easy it was for me to make a phony card. So uh, since our cards would not be scanned anywhere. There, there's no way to guarantee that someone would not make a, a fake card or just change the renewal date. So, um, you know, I, I know you probably have, I, we all have a Costco card online, a, a, you know, a Walgreens card online, my Six Flags passes online, but all those get scanned when you, when you go to use them. Our ACE card does not get scanned, or at least we can't expect all the parks to scan our, or be able to scan our card. So our line is, is just not going to work for us. We have to go with the physical plastic card, something that has an expiration date. And, you know, when your membership, if you don't renew, then that card is, is, is null and void. And, and when you do renew, we send you a new one. So hope that answers Thank your you. question. Thank you, Jeffrey. Um, Chris says that we have another comment. Yes, we have uh, one final comment uh, from James Bryan in Santa Cruz, California. Uh, just a nice job with this today. Uh, thank you, James. So Leanne made a motion to adjourn. And again, this is not the end of the, to the online session. This is just an uh, end of the online business meeting. I'll take a second. I'll second. This is Jerry. And second by Jerry Willard. Um, with that, the online biz, uh, 2020 ACE business meeting is adjourned. Um, the non-elected officials of the executive committee will be leaving the meeting. And we, uh, we're at 226. At 230, we'll start back up after a short intermission with the election candidate forum. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for, Thank you for Thank coming. You. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. So while we go ahead and get that started again, stick around. Uh, we're going to take about a four-minute break here as we switch over to the ACE Candidate Forum. Uh, in the meantime, please enjoy uh, these presentations here as we're going to put in the middle. So again, in about four minutes, we'll start up the ACE Candidate Forum. Uh, so please, by all means, stay tuned for that. Uh, and we'll be back again in about four minutes.
So bear with us here as we go ahead and switch out and get into this one. And as we're waiting for everything to be all set and ready to go, I remind everybody that if you have a question for one of the candidates uh, after they present their platform, please send it to question at aceonline.org, or you can drop it into the YouTube comment section. Just be sure that you uh, put the candidate that you wish to ask the question to. If it's everybody, then by all means, put it to everybody. And if you could also please put your full name and your uh, location, that would be greatly appreciated and would help expedite the process. A reminder that only ACE members in good standing may ask questions of the candidates. Uh, however, anybody may watch the candidate forum and we certainly wish and enjoy to have you here. So again, we'll be starting up the ACE candidate forum in just a few moments. And if I can just ask all the candidates right now, if you could please mute yourselves, that way we have no feedback. Thank you all very much. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. Once again, everybody, I welcome you back to the ACE Candidate Forum and Election Platform. This is your opportunity to ask fellow members who are running for office questions about their platforms and plans for the future of ACE. Here are the candidates who are running for office in 2020, and each one will be allowed a statement afterwards. Uh, President Robert Ulrich, unopposed. Vice President Jeff Niemick and Robert Regan. Secretary Lisa Zagarella, unopposed. Treasurer Sherry Armstrong, unopposed. Each candidate will now have the opportunity to make their brief speech, uh, and we'll begin first at the top of the list with Robert Ulrich, and then slowly work our way down the ballot. Robert? Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, I, I think the election of ACE officers is an extremely important part of the club. Um, as you, you can read my platform, and basically it says, if you like what you've seen, just expect more and better. Um, but I'd like to highlight the reason for the bylaw changes and the amendment change that we proposed. Um, the first in the order of the way they were done was the first thing we had to do was get rid of the trial membership. We had reduced the dues and the, do, the dues for the individual member became almost equal to the trial membership. A trial membership of a six month membership really wasn't converting to regular memberships. So the trial memberships had been, have been decommissioned as it were from the membership options for almost a year now and thus um, we just need to formalize removing the trial membership the other proposed bylaw change um, is a clarification of candidate qualifications in preparing for the election it was felt that there was not clarity that the three years of service a membership within the club should be immediately prior to the uh, nomination for an elected office. Uh, in getting an inquiry, we went back to the people who drafted the original constitution and that was their intent, was that the membership would be immediately prior to their nomination and thus opposed the constitution change there. And finally, and this is really part of my presidential platform, um, the current membership services director has both the, op the responsibility for membership and also for the operations. Again, we're an all volunteer organization and that's a huge span of responsibility for one person. Um, so we've, in discussing this, um, and it still to this day after 43 years amazes me that ACE has never had a member responsible for recruiting and retaining members. We've created a, a directorship specifically for the member services, the benefits, the recruiting, the retaining, what to do for a member and always focused similar to the way the region director on the executive committee focuses on the needs of the region, the member direct 
the new membership director will be focused on the needs of the members. So that's the proposed bylaw change number one, which is the most extensive because it picks and pulls from the various directors to, to reorganize the executive committee to help provide better services to our members going forward. Um, but Chris, that's basically my platform in a nutshell. Uh, again, if you like what you see, I'm not planning any big changes beyond what you see. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. We'll now go on to the candidates for vice president. And we'll start first with the incumbent, Jeff Niemick. Hello, everybody. As thank you and hi again from Monterey Park, California. Again, I am currently a, a teacher, so doing this in public is a lot more my style, but I've gotten used to doing it online now as well because it's, I'm a teacher. But my name is Jeff Nemec, as Chris said, and I am the current vice president. I've been the vice president now for two years, so winning this term would be my last term as vice president. I originally joined ACE in 2007, and actually my first roller coaster event was at Schlitterbahn in Texas, so it didn't actually involve a coaster, and I never thought, lo and behold, <laughs> 15 years later, that I would be the vice president serving you all, but just, I don't want to go over too much of what I mentioned in the business meeting, but just to reiterate a couple things that I've done since becoming vice president one of them is creating the Youth Advisory Committee. It is a committee that aims to kind of fix the age disparity within ACE. While a lot of the most fervent members and fervent enthusiasts of roller coasters are younger members, our average ACE member is somewhere in the mid 50s. And so engaging with people that are younger and trying to get members that can be lifelong friends and people we can ride coasters with, I think is a good thing. And to also help facilitate that, this past year, we started the first ever ACE college chapter at Beacon Hill in Florida. And we learned a lot from that. And we are trying to roll that out in, in more colleges. So if anyone is interested in making that happen, we would love, I would love to hear from you and potentially roll this, roll ACE into more colleges. And yeah, I mean, being vice president certainly comes with a lot of daunting challenges. Being in charge of the disciplinary committee is is one of the unfortunate parts of this job, but it must be done to keep the club in high standing and with integrity that is respected in this industry. So I'm happy to do that. And I would love to be your vice president for another two years. And yeah, Chris, thank you. That's about all I have. So I wish I could be with you all, but yeah, that's, if you have any more questions, my platform is available, as Robert said. And yeah, that's all I want to say. Okay. Thank you very much, Jeff. We'll now move on to uh, the other vice presidential candidate, and that would be Mr. Robert Regan. Robert, you there? Uh, Robert, you do appear to be frozen at the moment. If you want to go ahead and try and uh, hang up on the call and then come on back in, that might be able to to reset it there. Uh, because yeah, you're you're pretty frozen and we have no audio of you right now. So uh, folks, this is live, as you can imagine. So things do happen on occasion. Uh, we're certainly going to do our best to uh, get Robert on here, here. So if you want to just give it a minute while we're waiting for Robert to go ahead and uh, get back in there or just maybe reset the connection there, by all means, please send in your information to questions at aceonline.org. You can ask any of the candidates any question you'd like. Remember, they're the ones that are running for office that are going to be running the organization. So again, questions at aceonline.org. You can also just drop in a question or comment into the YouTube chat, which is over there. Just make sure that you put your full name and where you're located. Uh, we'll be verifying that it is an ACE member asking the question. And once you've been verified, then we can go ahead and ask that actual question. Uh, Robert, do you hear us now?
Is Robert currently muted? There he is. Robert, can you hear us? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Excellent. Let's. Uh, so thank goodness we got you back there. Um, you might be frozen on the screen, but that's okay. We can still hear you. That's the most important part. So if you'd like, go ahead and uh, give your uh, platform speech. And it looks like the bandwidth is just not cooperating with us today. <laughs> Uh, Robert, we cannot hear you currently. Um, if you'd like, uh, if you want to try and just call in uh, just via audio, uh, that might free up some bandwidth and we may not have that uh, issue with you freezing up. Uh, so if you want to go try ahead. talking, just in, hopefully y'all. You're coming in very intermittently. Robert, you can also try turning off your camera. Okay, so Robert's left the meeting. So we're going to go ahead uh, and uh, again, I'll just sort of wait for him the minute. I want to make sure that we get both the vice presidential candidates together if possible. So again, folks, if you have a question for any of the candidates, please send it into questions at aceonline.org or drop it in the YouTube comment section there. Just make sure that you put your name as well as your uh, location. That way we can verify that you're an ACE member and you can go ahead and have your question asked. Only ACE members who are in good standing are able to ask questions. Uh, so again, we'll just look forward to that as soon as he comes back in. Again, if you're just joining us, welcome to the ACE Candidate Forum and Election Platform Meeting. Uh, this is where you get the opportunity to listen to what the candidates have to say and what they are uh, all about. Uh, Robert, are you back in? Well, I'm on the uh, the phone only now. Is that good? That is, yes, we can hear you. That is wonderful. So I will step aside. Go ahead and give your uh, candidate speech. <laughs> okay, of course, uh, you know, y'all can read uh, what I uh, typed in there. Um, I am an ACE member that dates back to 1980. So here in a couple of months, I'm going to hit the 40-year mark. Um, obviously, ACE has been an incredible part of my life and uh, my family's life for decades now. And I absolutely have to say that I love the organization and it amazes me the fact that I've literally got friends all over the world at this point. And uh, we're also a three generation family now um, with my um, daughters and my granddaughters. And one of the things that we always taught our kids and we were um, starting them in the club and back when they were first born was the fact that they were able to interact with and communicate with people of all different backgrounds, all different uh, interests, that we had one thing in common among all of us. And that was a love of roller coasters and amusement parks. So. Um, we we tried to instill that kind of inclusion and that kind of uh, upbringing in them as we go to events. Um, I know that this uh, um, is a really challenging time for the club right now, um, as has been mentioned many times, between events being canceled and postponed and between parks either not opening or potentially never reopening, or it, um, it, it it makes it a challenge for us, but it's one that actually we should be able to rise to that challenge on, is what I've always believed um, for these last several months. Um, this is an opportunity for us to do much like when we get to attend a grand opening of a new ride. Um, we're there not because the park needs us to be there, but there were, we're there to provide support for the parks. So this is really an opportunity that ACERs can say something good about their park, um, their home park, say something good about a new ride or an old ride. Say, hey, I know that we can't ride it right now, or it's not able to be ridden in the normal way. 
um, such as having to wear a mask when you sit on a coaster now. But instead, we can say that, hey, um, this is what we love and this is what we're looking forward to. So let's support those parks when they make those business decisions to postpone their opening or to make special rules. Um, I personally, um, you know, I've had a lot of events I've been to, even going back to, well, this time 38 years ago, uh, we had a national convention in Hershey. That was my second convention to attend. Um, I was thought I think something changed. Um, we could have attended the first four national conventions, just for a little trivia fact, and not ride as many coasters as Hershey Park now is opening with their new coaster for next month. Or you would have had to have gone to the first seven conventions to ride as many coasters as um, are being featured in the convention that's now postponed to next year. So the conventions themselves have really changed a ton in the time that I've been in the club. Um, we went from showing up, we'd have a little bit of writing, but we'd have a lot more social time where now you go to a convention, you're just going from ride to ride to ride. And um, I'd really like to see the events take on a little bit more of the social and the interactive time more than just in the rides, just kind of a thought. Um, but um, I, I've, I can see the possibilities and I've actually lived them of how we can get multiple generations all together at the same time. For I've seen like, uh, you know, my kids um, at one point, uh, I'm, they were on a mini marathon to celebrate the anniversary of, well, what's now Racer 75 and the, um, the convention where we celebrated the um, founding of the club initially. And on that one, they were writing with one of the founders of the club. And it was interesting to see these kids that are like, you know, not even 10 years old sitting there interacting with one of the people who started the club many years. To, uh, what uh, I think at that time, it was about 20 years earlier. And I'd really like to see that one as a focus. And I know that our current vice president, uh, Jeff, you're, um, doing that same kind of thing that you're kind of targeting a little bit more towards the, um, you know, getting the, the youth involved, but, um, yeah, I want to see everyone get involved and I want to see that interaction between the different generations that I've seen this club can bring together. And, um, I mean, that's, that's really most of what I had to say. I love this club. I've seen the good it can do. And I really want to see us continue to um, support the parks and, you know, not complain that a park's not opening when we want it to, but instead say, hey, we understand that you're a business. You got to do what's right as a business. So thank you, Ace. Thank you, Robert. Uh, next, we're going to head to the secretary position, and that's Miss Lisa Zagarella. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you virtually. Um, I'm very excited to be running again for secretary. It has been a great two years. I have learned so much about the club, um, and I feel like I've just gotten my feet wet, and I'm excited to have the opportunity to continue to do more. For those of you that do not know, um, I'm a mom. Fun fact, I did not ride at my first few ACE events if, at my region. I'm from New England. And if you had seen me, I would have been standing near the coasters. What most people probably didn't know was that I was pregnant at the time. So I have two very small children and they are three and four years old. They both do have coaster credits. Um, one has one coaster credit, one has three coaster credits. Um, so we're a full ACE family. They come to events at the smaller parks with me. They didn't make it to CoasterCon last year. Um, so we all enjoy ACE together. I enjoy bringing the family perspective to ACE. Um, 
and I enjoy meeting all of you. And I have had such great fun in the organization. Secretary is very much a behind the scenes job. And that's great. I love being behind the scenes. I love um, giving back to the club. And hopefully I look forward to having the opportunity to do it for many more years, but at least two. So thank you guys. Thank you, Lisa. And now moving on to the treasurer position and Miss Sherry Armstrong. Thank you, Chris. Um, my platform, I guess, is the same as it's been for quite some time. I have an education background in accounting. I have spent over 40 years in the accounting field. Um, a little bit about me is I joined ACE in 1994, a long time ago. My son is an ACE member and now my grandson is an ACE member. He's really kind of bummed right now because we're not at Hershey Park, which is where he wants to go. I look ahead and I will hopefully serve for two more years as treasurer, but I promise this is the last time I will run for office of ACE. Um, I encourage you all to think ahead, to reach out to me if you have questions, but also reach out to me if you have any questions about the office of treasurer, because in two years we are going to be looking for someone who has some qualifications in the accounting field, hopefully to be able to take over this position. I'd certainly love to talk to you in the next few years and, and go over some of those qualifications with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sherry. Uh, we're gonna now move on to the questions for each of the candidates. So again, if you have a question for any of the candidates running for office, uh, please send it to questions at aceonline.org or drop it into the YouTube comment section. Just make sure you put your full name as well as your location. Uh, ACE members in good standing are the only ones they'll be able to allow to ask questions. Uh, but if you're watching for the public, thank you for joining us. We do appreciate it and uh, hope you get to see and enjoy uh, how ACE operates. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin with the first question that's come in and we're gonna take them by the way, as they come in. Uh, so again, please send those questions in because this is the one chance you're gonna get to actually ask. The first question comes from Bill Lincolnheimer III in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His question is for both VP candidates. Uh, and so I'll be uh, make sure both of you guys are unmuted. So this question again is for Jeff and for Robert. Given that one of the roles of the vice president is being able to take over at any time, if, even, if needed, do you aspire to eventually ascend to president and run after your term as vice president? And I'll start with, uh, actually start with Robert. Robert, you're uh, currently muted, so we need to unmute you there. Uh, but you'll have to do that on your side. So Robert, you're currently muted, so we need you to uh, unmute yourself and that way you can answer the question there. Uh, Robert, are you there? If you can hear us, you'll need to unmute yourself to answer the question. Okay, so uh, while we're waiting for uh, Robert, if you can hear us, uh, looks like you're gonna have to, the, your internet's either not working or whatnot, but if you can either call back in, there we go. Uh, and then I'll, we'll wait to make sure that both of you are on there for that. So again, folks, uh, apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, first time that we're broadcasting this thing live uh, without uh, having it being at a park. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. And that's questions at aceonline.org and also Make sure to just send a question in the YouTube comment section. Just make sure to print your full name as well as your location. And we'll get to those questions as soon as we are able to. Uh, we're just waiting for uh, Vice President Candidate Robert Regan to come back into the chat. And as soon as he does, there he is. Robert, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? I can. So I will uh, benefit everybody. I will ask the question one more time and we'll start with you. The question comes from Bill Lincolnheimer III in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. His question is for both vice president candidates. Uh, given that one of the roles of the vice president is being able to take over at any given time, if needed,
do you aspire to eventually ascend to the president and run after your term as vice president? Robert? Well, um, it's something I've considered. Um, I understand also, as Bill pointed out, that that is one of the responsibilities of the vice president to be ready to step into those shoes should the need exist. And, um, of course, I've got uh, quite a few years of management experience in my uh, background, in my non-ACE side of me. And um, I would like to be able to experience in the, so to speak, the, the lower level, the vice president level, and get a little bit better feel for the behind the scenes part that uh, really isn't heard from um, in the general public of ACE and um, be able to understand a little bit more about the negotiations and what each of the roles entails um, before I say beyond a shadow of a doubt that I would run should I be um, elected into the vice president whether I consider going to the president's position. Thank you. Thank you. And Jeff, uh, same question for yourself. Uh, would you like the question repeated? No, that's, I'm good, thank you. Okay. So as, so as the vice president, that absolutely is something that I would have to step into. I will say that, so I am 32 years old. I, and in this time of uncertainty, I actually just got a promotion within my full-time paying work. So there are things up in the air. I, it's something that I'm heavily considering. I would like to see where I, I am though in two years because my career is still evolving as a person who needs to make a, an actual physical living. So, I mean, if I'm able to do it and I and I determine at that point that I'm able to serve the club effectively because I do think that that's a, a legitimate commitment that you need to be prepared for. So if I determine at that time that I'm able to, I would like to, but I also don't want to say concretely 100% yes because I might not be in the best position in that two years to do so. But so I, I don't know at this time if I will be running in two years, but I, if I'm able to, I would like to. Okay. Thank you very much. The next question uh, comes from Ted Ainsley of Harrisonburg, Virginia. This question specifically is for Robert. Do you have any ideas of what you will do differently than any of the last three to four vice presidents? Any new ideas not yet tried in ACE? Well, Ted, uh, thank you for the question. Um, it's kind of an interesting concept to try to do something different. Clearly, um, looking at the ideas of trying to get more people involved, um, the electronic society that we've gotten into um, makes it a little different form of interaction than we've ever had to deal with in this country. And so finding a way to um, continue expanding our online presence, as well as how to still bring in that face-to-face -face side uh, is always going to be. As far as specific plans, no, I do not have any particular ones that I'd like to say at this time. Um, you know, of course, I've, I'm still being the old school type. Um, I'd really, again, I'd like to see more activities, especially at the major events that involves um, getting together for non-coaster riding parts of things. And I really think that that is the type of thing um, that would really bring a lot together. And then I really want to see a lot more emphasis of the club that we've kind of forgotten about from our roots of really encouraging and promoting the smaller, the family owned parks that can really benefit from what ACE does. There are so many of the classic family-owned parks um, that I've visited in the 80s and the 90s that are just like gone at this point. Uh, my first coaster trip, I went to nine parks, including the Hershey Convention, and four of the parks that we visited are completely gone. 
and it's it's disturbing. And at the same point, um, it reminds me of the the opportunities that ACE has as an organization to really shine a lot more spotlight on these parks that may be not as big in the thrills, but are still an integral part of our organization and our industry and our business. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. The next question is actually a comment from Luke Fillion from Hamilton, Ontario in Canada. Luke would like us to know to thank the executive team and all of the reps and assistant reps for the hard work and keeping ACE going. And also that this meeting format is excellent. So Luke, thank you very much for that comment. Do appreciate it. The next question for the candidates is from Elizabeth Ringus from Glen Allen, Virginia. Specifically, it is for you, Robert. Uh, why did you choose the vice president role to run for? What ideas do you have to make your idea of enhancing socialization as a benefit of membership a reality? Uh, I think I chose the vice president because uh, I don't have the same um, background skills that, for example, the secretary or the treasurer position would have. I believe there are other people in the organization who that better fits their profile. Um, I see this as an opportunity to, well, I had past experience as a regional rep in the North Texas and region club. Um, so this, this actually fits more my, um, background and my personal profile that, um, um, I can not necessarily oversee as much as have a much stronger input into the direction of the club and pointing us toward an inclusive society as well as one that, uh, as I mentioned before, really puts more spotlight back onto the parks that could use our support the most. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. The next question is for all of the candidates. And it comes from Mike Matcherts from Collegeville, Pennsylvania. His question is, what does ACE's constitution and bylaws mean to you? And let's go ahead and just start at the top of the ticket uh, with Robert Ulrich, and then uh, we'll go down from there. Um, it's the, to me, the constitution and bylaws are the foundation of the club. Um, they're, they are something that you know, should be looked at as the, the first building blocks of anything that we do. Um, and however, at the same point, there are always the current amendments that are in there, either for clarification or to better serve the needs of the membership. Because in reality, while the, the Constitution and the bylaws are the, the foundation, it's all built on the members themselves. Because that's where the club really begins is at the member level. And then the Constitution bylaws hopefully support the needs of the members. Thank you, Robert. Uh, now uh, to Jeff Niemick. What do the Constitution and bylaws of ACE mean to you? I tend to echo Robert's sentiment on this matter. The Constitution and the bylaws are the guiding and the founding principles of ACE. And they're also the way that members keep us accountable. And they're the ways that members know how to interact with each other. So, I mean, the Constitution and bylaws lets people know how we are set up. And it's the way that... Yeah, I mean, the primary way is so that we know the way to organize ACE and to best serve our members. I think I think Robert covered it, though. Okay, thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Robert Regan. Well, of course, I think of two things. I think of roots and rules. Um, roots, basically, um, this is what our club was founded on. These are what the guys that came together... 40 plus years ago and figured out just exactly what they were wanting and what basic goals that the club would have. And if we forget what our roots are, 
then we've kind of like forgotten what the club is all about in the first place. The support, the appreciation, and the love of roller coasters and the parks that they're in. As far as rules, it makes it so that, number one, things like the executive committee and the elected positions, it makes sure that uh, there's not any person or group of people that um, really, um, I don't know, dominate the club. It's more of a case where um, you want people to be the supporters of the club and the directing of the club. And then part two is the bit where um, you don't want people to just throw the club's name out there and essentially abuse the club's name. You know, you want to be able to maintain that um, level of standard that the club has. And um, you want to make sure we keep at least a little bit of the higher ideals so the bylaws and the rules will um, give us a way to address those who don't really want to essentially follow the rules and a way to address them and steer them as well as, again, just keep our name good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, Miss Lisa Zagarella. Hi, Mike. Thanks for the question. Um, I think that the gentlemen that spoke before me certainly have covered a lot. Um, something that I would like to add to that is that, of course, the Constitution and the bylaws, as we see um, in this election, have had issues of interpretation and we seek to correct those whenever possible. I also think that they're there to allow members to give us feedback. And I think it's really important as members of the executive committee that we listen to our membership. And, you know, if there is something, our organization is certainly, we're a large organization and we're extremely well structured for a large organization. And if there is something that um, the members feel that the leadership is not doing well in serving them, I think that the bylaws and the constitution um, are an excellent way for us to have that conversation. And um, I'm glad that they're there. And I certainly welcome any feedback that the members have around any of our performance around those founding documents. Thank you very much, Lisa. And moving on to Ms. Sherry. Um, thank you. I don't really have a lot to add. Um, I, I agree the Constitution, the bylaws are a very important part of our club. They certainly provide the executive committee guidance to run the club and to help keep us all accountable for what we need to do. Um, that's all I have to say. All right. Thank you very much, Sherry. The next question comes from Mr. David Lipnicki in Grand Prairie, Texas, and it's addressed to Robert, Robert Regan. Uh, Robert, you've talked about the past and wanting ACE to be more multi-generational. So what specific plans do you have to facilitate ACE to become more multi-generational? Uh, thank you for your question, David. Um, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting thing to try to bring everybody together. Um, a lot of the events um, right now tend to focus more on the rides themselves. And um, you tend to see a lot more of the younger generation. They'll just go around and ride and ride and ride. Um, that's where I was thinking of the idea of bringing back some of the older style activities that are um, not necessarily the writing side of things that you really need to look at and we need to look at as a club ways to find things that all the generations can do at the same time together. And uh, I know that like, for example, here in the, uh, the current region that I'm in there around Texas, um, we have a number of activities that we sometimes will play games at our annual winter event. And, and listen, it's not unusual to see um, activities that can be done by everybody in the club. So everybody who's in the room can get together doing the same kind of thing. And it builds a little bit of camaraderie that way. But um, I really want to see um, a little bit more even out of people like myself that um, 
have got a lot of stuff in quote my wife and I's archives that we really need to start digging out a little bit more and sharing and talking a lot more about the history and figuring out a way to influence, so to speak, the younger generations to understand that um, there's a lot more to coasters than the newest one that just opened. And I tend to see a lot of that that I think we could kind of help because I know that myself, I didn't grow up in a family that did roller coaster riding. In fact, I never even um, rode the biggest coaster at the Six Flags over Texas my first year I worked there. Um, at the same point, um, I started traveling a little bit with um, trips the park ran where he went to other parks, and I realized that there's a lot more to the business and to rides. And I was able to really start the beginning and the roots at that point of learning more about the background and a lot more of the older stuff. And that's really what I've always loved. And so I think really we need to dig a lot more into some of the past and learn how to find a way to share that information with all the different generations. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. The next question comes from Leanne Droud of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And the question is for Robert Regan. You have stressed your activities for ACE in the past. Have you volunteered for any ACE activities in the past few years? Uh, yes, in fact, um, um, I'm wearing the shirt right now from the convention two years ago, the last convention that my wife and I were able to attend. And um, one of the things that we did at that particular one was work the registration tables, which honestly was really, really cool because um, to some degree it was that, um, you know, people would come up to my registration position that I'd known sometimes for a while, sometimes for years. And at the same point, there were also a lot of people that came up that I'd never met before. So just that few moments of interaction, um, was able to kind of start a little bit of bonds with people. And so, yes, um, I definitely am one of those that, um, I mean, I would like to expand my um, activities in the club, whether through this position or through my other times. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. The next question comes in from Madison Partingen from Attleboro, Massachusetts, and it's also for Robert Regan. Uh, I've been working with Jeff on the uh, YAC Youth Activities Committee for the past year. Uh, so what would you do with the Youth Activities Committee and working towards youth involvement? <laughs> well, Madison, uh, thank you for your question. Um, first of all, I'm really not um, very deeply in um knowledgeable about the Youth Activity Committee other than some of the comments I've seen Jeff make about that. So I'd really like to see what's already been done um, and really have a better understanding before I could fully um, address that question in all honesty. Um, of course, you know, I've seen it through my own family in our local region mostly that um, there are a lot of multi-generational families such as my own that um, um, trying to, to steer all the different generations in the right direction to really support and involve all the different parties in the club. So again, I, I would really, I need to dig a little bit more into um, what's currently being done on that one. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. The next question is for both of the vice presidential candidates. And it's from Alexander Infeld of Durham, Connecticut. One of the things that the vice president does is oversees ACE cares. What would you do to improve ACE's philanthropic efforts? And we'll stop or start rather with Jeff Niemick. <clears throat> so, ACE Cares has 
already been successfully ramping up its interaction with other philanthropic organizations, including Give Kids the World. That's been one of our, our main partnerships. So under the under the, the previous AIDS Cares chair, Adam Napotic, he did a great job of reassuring up that relationship. So the amount of organi- the amount of events with that team was already increasing. We are in kind of a sticky situation as part of the reality of being a nonprofit club in that we cannot ourselves raise money. So we are a little bit constrained in exactly what we can do. When I got into the position and started working with it, I'll be honest that I thought we were able to do a little bit more like direct fundraising, for example, but we have to focus more so on partnering with organizations or parks that are doing their own sort of their own sort of events and that's kind of just the reality of, of how we have to do most of our of our operations with ace cares so we're on the lookout for ways to partner with parks that are for example like running 5ks or doing different kind of drives because if we help promote events that they're already doing we're not doing any of the direct fundraising but the parties that would benefit from like the services that provided by those fundraisers would still get them and it also coincides with going to parks that we love so it's we're working to to strengthen those relationships with like give kids the world for example but we're also always on the lookout for individual parks to partner with but i hope that answered the question thank you jeff and robert same question well um first of all i I am uh, so 100 percent in favor of the idea of us being able to be involved uh, clearly within the guidelines, as Jeff pointed out, of what we're able to and what we're not able to do. Um, Give Kids the World Village is an example. I've actually visited there twice. And it's it's an incredibly moving um, experience to visit. And so if anyone's in the Orlando area and has an opportunity to go by, take a tour, um, I guarantee it'll change your perspective on a lot of things. Um, second thing, of course, is the National Roller Coaster Museum, which I'm guessing at this point that um, that would be related to the same subject. Um, uh, our, our our involvement in that, which I know that was originally conceived as a ACE project before it was made as a whole separate organization, Um any time that we have an opportunity to raise funds being at um, an event, for example, where somebody puts up an item as an auction item to raise money to help either of those organizations or our preservation fund, for example. Um, I know that personally my wife and I have donated a number of uh, um, items through the years for auctions, um, both at the local level and even in national conventions that um, have helped raise money. Um, I know that the the roller coaster riding events that are done for, for example, to give kids the world village, um, that's something that uh, one of the local members and longtime friend of mine who passed away not too long back, um, Rick was heavily involved in that. And, um, while not all of us necessarily can sit there and ride rides off and on and, you know, for hours at a time, but at the same point, you know, there's a number of things that we can each do to be involved, to help support when the call comes out, Hey, we need some people to show that enthusiasm, to show the support and basically do much of what we do when we get invited to media events, which is, um, tell the world what exactly is a benefit of these different organizations and essentially be cheerleaders. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. The next question is for both the president and vice presidential candidates. And it comes from us from Luco Simlesa from New York city with so many other clubs around. What are your plans to increase membership numbers in ACE and keep existing members in the club? And we'll start first with Robert Ulrich.
Uh, thank you for the question. Um, not only is this year challenging, but that's always a challenging question. Um, through, through my career in ACE, I've always talked about the ACE advantage and really how the club is differential, different from all the other organizations. You know, when I started out in the, in the club back in the early 80s, it really, you know, there weren't that many options. Now people start up YouTube pages and or YouTube channels and Facebook pages and Twitter feeds. And they say, well, that's a club. And I sincerely do not think so. Um, but what we ACE can do is be more responsive to the members. And one of those things is our coverage of the IAPA Expo, which is the industry exposition in November, which even in this time of COVID, um, we're still being told that it's, it is going to happen. And you will see, last year you saw expanded coverage from our communications team, and you'll see even more coverage this year. But that's an example because what we have to do is show the members and potential members the benefit of being a member of a club such as ACE. Um, next week's Coaster Con at Home is another example of that. I don't think there's any other organization out there that could launch such a multifaceted, multi tentacled event. Um, working from their houses. And I'm very proud of that fact. And I think by demonstrating the advantage of ACE, we will continue to retain the members and hopefully grow them in the future. Thank you, Robert. Uh, moving on, we'll go to Jeff Niemek. Same question. Yes, I mean, hearing allowing you all to hear kind of Scott's numbers that he gave during his report, that membership is up a thousand people since the last since last year is just it's kind of baffling to hear that and it's it's really exciting to see that ace is going in this direction and i think a large part of that has been our as a club the visibility and i want to just shout out personally elizabeth ringus for a second here because she has done an amazing amount of work to make a plan that has made us more relevant and has made us more talked about and has made it so parks are contacting us more often to get our people at their media days and to be the ones they interview. And so uh, using the tools that we have at our disposal, like the Facebook, like Twitter, like Instagram, but especially Facebook and, and those kind of online social media tools, it's going to allow us to attract those new members. And we've also done things like something I've also done at, at national events last year, and it was going to happen this year, was the information tables at national events, where we have people stationed outside with literally our literature, our, our business cards, our pamphlets, and then talking to people that are interested in what they see going on in the park around them and they could possibly join and become members. So doing things like those initiatives, like making sure there's a presence in parks at national events when they're seeing hundreds of people wearing lanyards and having fun together, and they're asking a lot of questions about it. So we're doing different kinds of things like this to try and attract new members. And then we're also constantly adding new member benefits that I think are enticing, that are helpful to our members. And the more we do that, and the more we publicize, the ton of advantages we have at with, with like not even just parks but like hotel chains and car rentals we ace as a club offers a ton to people so the more we publicize that the better we are and i started rambling again but there's a lot we can do to help keep fueling ace forward it's just it's stepping on the gas with a lot of the things that we've started rolling out over the past year thank you jeff robert same question to you robert Rico. Yep. Um, well, it, it's interesting, you know, without sounding too much like a parrot, I definitely want to um, echo a lot of what the other two gentlemen have said that, um, you know, I mean, that was all extremely valid points. Um, I know a lot of people, newer members of the club um, may not be totally familiar, but um, while ACE is one of the oldest enthusiast organizations there is, um, there's always been other organizations um, well before the internet days. Um, there were, so to speak, regional clubs. 
And, um, I mean, there were a lot of ACERs that were members of two or more organizations, including ACE, for many years. Um, one thing that really happened was the coaster boom of the early 90s that, um, an example here at my home park, the Texas Giant Open, it's amazing how many new people were spurred into the club because prior to that time, we'd have regional events. And if we got 25 people at the event, that was huge. Well, all of a sudden, our regional membership spiked because of a large premier ride that drew a lot of people, many of which had never heard of ACE. And so that was one of the things that, um, you know, using that opportunity to, I don't know, explain the benefits of being in the big organization. Um, as uh, Jeff pointed out, having the tables at the major events because you see all these people wearing these lanyards is certainly a way to um, to kind of get the word out. Um, even just standing in line or walking around the park, sitting in a restaurant or whatever, when you're wearing that lanyard, you will definitely see people looking at them and you'll have people come up to you and ask what it's all about. Well, here's an opportunity that we can really tell people what it's all about. Um, as far as the the member benefit side, um, an interesting thing that's happened over the last several years that's very different is the season pass situation at amusement parks. There's a lot of us that we buy a season pass from one park and it's good at a bunch of different parks. So finding the ways that um, we can get benefits outside of the park admission is definitely an important factor in my book. Um, finding the type of benefits, um, you know, travel related, finding the, um, the other types of things at the parks that don't have these big chains that you can buy one pass or two passes and go to 20 parks, 30 parks different. Um, are really important. But I think just the continuous idea that, you know, you can walk into a, um, an event that's multi-days and multiple parks, and we can use our influence, so to speak, to help the park really promote things. And um, that's really the, the opportunities that we need to getting onto the media when somebody comes walking up to you with a camera at an event. You know, I mean, how many times has somebody been onto a new ride and it wasn't as good as you were hoping or it wasn't what you were hoping the park was going to build? But a reporter walks up to you, the premier of that ride. It's always a good idea to find something great to say about that ride. And whether it may not be the perfect thing for you, find something because we're we're there to help promote the ride. And most likely it's going to say across the bottom of the screen by your name what organization you're with, ACE in this case. And so um, that right there is another opportunity that we can get for being responsible individuals when the opportunity comes up that makes the club look good. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. The next question comes from Harry Sykes from Parma, Ohio. And the question is specifically for Robert Regan. Since part of the duties of vice president are disciplinary committee head, do you have any ideas of how you would handle disciplinary issues that come about as negative or derogatory posts on social media? Well, that's an interesting question, Harry, um, being the fact that, uh, Pretty well, anybody with a computer or nowadays even a cell phone can post something on the Internet. And um, there's a lot of opportunities that people basically can speak without a mute button. And um, so we want to be able to do kind of a two-part thing, in my opinion. One is a little bit of the educational side. We want to remind people that, hey, 
if they're going to mention ACE or if they're well recognized in ACE, um, please take that three seconds before you click send for anything you're going to post online. And, um, you know, we need to make sure that that's pointed out, you know, throw it into an ACE publications, um, like that ACE News Online. Um, throw it every now and then, just say, hey, reminder, um, whenever you speak part of ACE, then you're representing ACE into the world. Um, second thing, we definitely don't want to tolerate um, poor behavior online. Um, we want to be able to give constructive criticism, but if somebody is just flat out being derogatory or not responding when we inquire, you know, and encourage them to change their way of presenting the information, then I really think that we need to be much more firm handed in that case. But I think we want to try to find a way to help people understand the benefit of speaking in a positive way when representing ACE. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. And just a friendly reminder to everybody watching uh, at home, hopefully you're all being safe. Uh, welcome to CoasterCon at Home. This is the ACE uh, election candidate platform meeting. This is where you get the opportunity to ask questions of the candidates running for office and running to make sure that ACE is doing as good as it is or even better. So again, if you have a question for a candidate, please email us questions at aceonline.org, or you can drop it in the YouTube comment section. Either way, please make sure to put your full name as well as your location, uh, as only ACE members in good standing are allowed to ask those questions. And the next question is for Robert Regan, and it comes to us from Robert Engel in San Jose, California. The question is that you talk a lot about uh, our roots and the past uh, and that you're hoping that ACE focuses more on slowing down at events. But in order to survive and grow, ACE must appeal to the younger generation. So how do you balance the two? Wow, that's a that's a really great question. And that's something that, uh, um, you know, I, I can give a number of opinions about, but it's going to take a lot of us to brainstorm and figure out um, what's going to appeal to multiple different people. Because, um, again, there's a lot of difference from one generation to the next, but um, we want to make sure that each of us is, number one, representing the club in the best way. And number two, um, in all honesty, um, just getting a chance to experience some of the other things besides sitting on a coaster and waving your arms around and screaming. Um, I mean, we got to make sure that there's, there's opportunities to do the other stuff. And so um, you got to let people dip their toe into it a little bit and say, hey, that was kind of fun. We should do that more. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. Just checking in here to see if there are any other questions. We're going to give it a couple more minutes, I think. If anyone else would like to ask any additional questions, please drop them in the YouTube comments or send them to questions at aceonline.org. Uh, be sure to include your full name as well as your location, and uh, we will certainly get that question asked for you. Uh, so I'm giving the last call right now for any other questions that you may want to ask these candidates. Remember, uh, the ACE election is now live. You just check your ACE email address uh, or the email address you have for your ACE emails. And you can go online after this and vote. Uh, and by all means, please do vote. Uh, your voice does matter. And it, you are the voice that helps keep this organization running. So by all means, please do. Again, uh, last call for questions here for the candidates. And uh, Mr. Ulrich, I don't know, would you guys like to make any closing statements before you head out or? I, I will just remind everybody to vote by, the votes are due by July 15th. And to please not only vote for the candidates, but also for the bylaw and amendment um, at the end of the ballot. 
Thank you. And if, there's a, if there's a question about how to vote on the amendments and ballots, the answer is for all three of them, if you agree with what the club has been doing in the past. Thank you very much, Robert. Jeff, do you have any closing statements? Yes, I just want to thank everyone for their time today and listening to these candidate platforms. I think it's great that Robert is running for vice president. I, I think it's great that there is at least one race that has given people an option. So just good luck to Robert in this race. And I've been happy to serve you. And if I'm lucky enough to do that for another two years, I would love to serve this club. I love it a whole lot. But if you all choose Robert, that's totally understandable as well. I will still be helping out at regional events. So yeah, thank you all. Thank you very much, Jeff. Appreciate it. Robert Regan, uh, any closing thoughts? Well, uh, first of all, I just wanted to say, Chris, uh, thank you very much for emceeing things. Um, as far as um, closing thoughts, uh, I also have a lot of respect for Jeff and what he's doing and been doing. And so I wish you the best one way or the other. Um, I, I would like to encourage more people to ponder the opportunity of um, having their name out there for one of these elected positions. I know it's a couple of years before another opportunity comes up, but uh, consider this. We've got close to 6,000 members in the club, and only one of the positions is actually a contested position. And um, all of these candidates that are currently in the role, um, their last opportunity, should they get elected here in a few weeks, um, to be in this role will end. So they have the option to move to a different role or to move on to something else or, you know, just step away completely. So be prepared that um, there'll be a whole new set of candidate opportunities. So please consider this as one way that you can get involved in the club. Um, I know it's not for everybody, but, you know, think if you can benefit from the club, this is certainly a way to get your voice out there and get it heard and to feel to take action because this is a club that's absolutely an amazing group of individuals. And we have the major ride, the king of the amusement park, the king of the midway that uh, we love and the parks will love us back as long as we keep that um, enthusiasm up to kind of dial it up to 11. So thank you. Thank you very much, Robert. And uh, before we go to Sherry and Lisa, we do have one other question uh, for Jeff. Um, and it's the question that Robert was asked earlier, and it's from Harry Sykes in Parma, Ohio, uh, as well as uh, it's being asked by Jeffrey Seifert, Grand Prairie, Texas. Uh, that question, Jeff, is since part of the duties of vice president are disciplinary committee head, uh, do you have any ideas how you would handle disciplinary uh, disciplinary issues that come about through negative or derogatory posts on social media? So that is actually one of the things that I'm working on right now. I'm working on drafting a social media code of conduct that spells things out a little bit more clearly so people know kind of what we expect of them. But this is something that it, I'm attempting to tread a, a fine line because I am a person, I, I'm a teacher, I teach engineering, but I, I'm also a speech and debate coach. And so freedom of expression and freedom of speech are important things to me. So I do not want to infringe on a person's ability to post an honest review on their own personal account. But when it comes to, for example, ACE, ACE member, ACE, representatives making comments or being disparaging when those comments transcend the line where they hurt our reputation with the park or they hurt our standing in the industry i think that's when it has to be taken care of but up until that point i i want people the freedom to express themselves i will say that it's concerning that i feel that people are willing to say things to each other in a more derogatory manner online than they would in person so one thing that i might be a little bit more severe on quote unquote is that i take what people write online to each other in the same context as if they said it in person to each other 
So I would just, I would, I, in those kind of, in those situations, it's a conversation between me and, and the people that involved. It's not anything that's like suspension or whatnot, but it's about respecting each other, I think. But I think I've rambled long enough. I don't know. I think I might have answered the, the question, Chris. Let's, <laughs> why don't we cut it there? I think I got the. Understood. Yes. Uh, so uh, apologies then to uh, Lisa there for cutting off her uh, her last little speech there. So Lisa Zagarella, do you have any closing statements you'd like to make? Just to echo, I want to thank everybody for their time and thoughtful engagement. Um, there were some really excellent questions that I felt helped us learn more about the candidates. And I also just want to give a quick shout out to Bill and his team. Bill has been patiently on this call um, and they do a lot behind the scenes as the election committee to get this to happen. So thank you to Bill as well. And everybody enjoy Costa Con at home. Thank you very much, Lisa. And Sherry Armstrong. Well, thank you for allowing me to survey. I have loved volunteering for the last eight years on the EC, and I look forward to two more great years because I'm running unopposed, and this is a big write-in campaign. Um, I wish you all to be safe, be well, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you very much, Sherry. And the, I don't believe I can actually say this, but Robert, I believe that is the end of the candidate forum. Uh, with that, we'll wrap it up. I want to thank everyone, not only for participating in the streams today, but also just in the organization. We are member driven. So we appreciate you being a part of ACE. Uh, now, this is not the end of CoasterCon at home. In fact, this is just very much the beginning. So to be checking out all the other online events this week as part of CoasterCon at home, at aceonline.org slash at home. Just so you know, the next event that's gonna be coming up is tomorrow at one o'clock Eastern. And that is the opening ceremony Zoom call uh, with myself. We're just gonna meet up, talk about what's coming up that week and also kick off a couple of the contests. So we're very much looking forward to that. Thank you all again so much for joining us and we'll see you at CoasterCon at home.